All right, hello and welcome back, dudes and dudettes, to a video I haven't done in a while called Tips and Tricks Grounded Edition for New Players, or however I'm going to call this, to be honest. Beginner Tips and Tricks, there you go. Uh, today I'm going to show you a couple tips and tricks I have learned as I've played. We're doing it in custom mode. I do have bugs who will actually attack us on, however, I will not take damage. And I have equipment durability turned off because, or on, because I want you to see that it does matter. So, first tip I'm going to teach you is save your axe durability. As you're going to notice, is you're going to find a lot of grass that's kind of like this. Or even like this around the yard. This is going to save your axe durability by slicing two at a time. As you can see, it saves quite a bit of durability right there. Versus here. As you can see, it takes you on your durability a little bit faster. It's a little unnoticeable. But, it, you know, every little bit does help, so you definitely want to keep on with that durability. The second tip on our list is, when you're in woe mode or any kind of mode, it's best utilized in woe mode, in my opinion, but the other modes that does work very well is to let the bugs fight for you. You're going to run into instances where you're going to see bugs fighting each other, or they might not. For instance, you might see a ladybug nearby, but there's a bunch of orb weavers chasing you, or a bomb deer, or even some of those soldier ants that are going to be pretty hard in the beginning, especially if you're in woe mode. The best way to do this is to actually go through and let them fight each other. Right now we're in photo mode because I actually have a prime example I just stumbled across of a stink bug fighting a bunch of stuff right now. As you can see, he's currently fighting right now and we don't want to get too close because we don't want to aggro him by accident. But he's currently fighting a couple of bombardiers and it looks like he either he or something else has killed the soldier ant. These are free bug parts for you, but look at that. They're taking them on. This can also be a very free... Stink bug part, if you're lucky, if they take him out, or if they, he takes them out, you've got a couple bombardier parts. Most likely, he's going to take out a bombardier as well as get killed himself because the bombardiers are pretty rough. As you can see, this guy's kind of mad at me, but like I said, we're in custom, so it doesn't matter. But now you can see, you've got some parts right there, and then he's weak enough right now. Look at that. He's already dead to our friend over here who also got killed by this. So again, using the bugs to fight for you is the best way to utilize a good stratagem in order to survive and get better parts. We'll be right back as we get ready to set up for number three. All right, and welcome back dudes and dudettes to tip number four. So as you can see here, we've got one grass thing and we actually have another one that's duplicate basically of it. So you'll know the hits. So to cut down the grass thing, it takes, uh, what is it? Five to six hits maybe? So one, two, three four five six so six hits but if you two hand like charge attack it two three four five you actually save yourself one hit which again helps you save durability this is tip number four and it's kind of useful depending on what you're doing i would personally use it if you're especially in woe mode uh it does come in handy for pivot axe it's not really needed but as you start getting higher and using the higher level you know weapons like the insect hacks and stuff like that until you can get a good fresh solid foundation under you it's really good to kind of do that just because you don't want to be up the creek without a paddle without anything to help you out when you desperately need it or you never know it could come in a you know in a little pinch where you need your insect axe because something requires chopping. You know, the creature needs chopping, it's weak to chopping, and it could save your life. So that little extra bit of durability can save you in the long run. But I'll bring you back when we go to tip number five. All right, dudes and dudettes, and welcome back. This is tip number five, effectively tracking down and getting weevils. As you may have noticed, weevils seem to love mushrooms. They are around the big mushrooms quite a bit, and it actually helps. But if you drop down a little pile of mushrooms, as you can see... Even just one kind of attracts them. However, two to three is actually better, but now you have a weevil here, as you can see. And you've got weevil meat. Tip number five is just kind of helpful, helps you get some more food and whatnot, and keeps you going. I'll show you a real life timer. It doesn't actually take too long to get a weevil to come over here. As you can already hear, we've got a weevil coming over. Maybe two or three, actually. Sometimes if you actually leave the area, if you build like something around it, like let's say some buildings over through here let's try like some triangle walls you can actually make it to where they can't get into them this is a very effective strategy for getting yourself some weevils coming and having all the food you could ever need 
You do have to be careful, though, however, because the weevils can and will go through and sometimes get into the mushrooms without you wanting them to. But right as you can see, there's two weevils right here, and that's just due to the mushrooms tracking them, which is really awesome. I will bring you back uh, back when we get to tip number six. All right, hello, and welcome back, dudes and dudettes, to tip number six. As you can see, I'm holding a pebblet here, and this is for what I call caveman berry farming. <laughs> Come up here. You're going to throw rocks at berries, and this is going to make it super easy while you're just kind of running through because you don't want to use a weapon, or if you're not, like, if you're like me and you're not inclined to use a bow, it's actually pretty useful to do this. This one's a little tricky, but you can get it, as you can see. Uh, you can do this many different ways with different items and whatnot. I prefer pebblets. They're very inexpensive. They don't cost anything. You literally just find them around the yard. You can do it with arrows, but again, I'm I'm not really an archer. I don't care to be an archer, to be honest. But there's also a pet, or not a pebblet, but a berry blocking the way in the hedge lab that's gonna prevent you from moving forward. By having a pebblet already while you're harvesting berries, it actually makes it very useful and easy. But as you can see, I've already got several berries down, and this is gonna be a mass quantity of harvesting. And that's gonna be it for tip number six. And welcome back, dudes and dudettes. Tip number seven, which is, if it's slippers, while they might not be that strong and they might actually be pretty weak when in terms of, you know, kind of keeping us alive, they do make us faster when exploring the yard, which makes exploration a lot nicer. You may also want to consider upgrading them because they give you more sprint distance in the long run too to sleek when done right, which is very useful. While I said, like I said, they don't have much in the terms of defense, as you can see right here, compared down to here, they only go up to almost a two bar. You can make them defensive wise and they would have a lot more defense, but spirit distance is going to be more useful for your exploration of the yard. And it's one of the things I'd pair with Natural Explorer to kind of go with it. But even without them upgraded, I'd still recommend them if you want to explore the yard pretty fast. It makes it convenient, quick and nice for you when you want to go through really quickly. But I'll bring you back when we get to the next tip. All right, dudes and dudettes, this next tip, tip number nine, the second to last tip I'm actually going to give is going to be a 10 part tip and trick video, but this is actually a personal favorite of mine, and it's that when you're trying to get to the upper yard, you notice that you need a bomb. You can't quite get up here as they've kind of turned it to where you can't really do much here, but let's say if you don't want to waste your materials on bombs to make bombs, it's super easy to get up here without doing that. Say you have the ladder recipe already made, you've got half your battle already done. What you're gonna go through and do, and I already had it done, but I actually went past it, is you're gonna go to your ladder, grab it, and kind of come back a little bit this way. It sometimes gets a little finicky and does take a little bit of time to get it just right, but you can place a ladder here. And once done, as you can see right here, you can put your ladder there. You do have nice little stems down here to make it. You just need to bring over some acorn tops and you can get the ladder put here, get close enough. You can climb up it if you need to. If you keep it down enough, you can actually jump straight onto it, but then now you're in the upper the yard. Holy nature's hockey puck it actually makes it a very easy access to the upper yard and it's a personal favorite of mine as i do not like to make bombs or waste them on things early game that i normally can't get to and while having access to the upper yard is scary it's also great to get your hands on some easy Science early or game or i should say late game loot that normally you can't get by making insects fight each other such as fire ant stuff and whatnot Fire ant stuff you can't really use quite yet because you're going to need some other stuff, but you can get roly-poly stuff out of it by no doing it. Work. Getting roly-poly gear early on is actually going to be pretty insane and keep you protected really nicely. So, that is tip number 9. And now, dudes and dudettes, tip number 10 is, again, it is a beginner tip. It can be used with brat burst. You don't technically have to have a splat burst, but it's actually also a very fun tip if you need to harvest grass fast for a base. It gets you Grassmaster very fast, as well as create some good chaotic fun. You take any kind of bomb that you currently have, and you throw it at a bunch of grass, and you let it explode. And as you can see, we're already tearing out half the yard. This can create some strain on your PC or whatnot, so be a little careful if you're using PC. Probably could strain your Xbox or your whatnot, too, because, uh, you know... It's, it's it's a little rough. Your Xbox Series X might not be able to handle your Xbox. You know, the newest one, Xbox One X or whatever it's called. Could also be a problem. 
And actually, we just learned a new tip right here. This is kind of secret tip number 11. You can actually use bombs to blow up things underground. That's going to make it super useful, actually, to bring out larvas and stuff that you may not want to deal with. It's actually a random tip I didn't know was part of the game. We actually just found it out while making this video. And as you can see, we already had Grassmaster 1. And we should be getting Grassmaster 2 pretty quickly now. As you can see, though, we are tearing up every piece of grass here. It also has other grass nearby, making it super convenient and powerful to gather grass and make your base even faster. And it's just good chaotic fun. As you can see, we've already got Grassmaster 2 now. It just makes it super fast to get Grassmaster. It makes a big old mess. And I mean, who doesn't like blowing things up? It's super fun. It's super hilarious. And it's, well, let's be honest, it's for those rich people that just want to kind of throw around their resources to have some fun. Because they might have gotten irritated with the yard and had a bad day. And we're like, you know what? I'm just going to destroy everything and anything inside. Anyways, dudes and dudettes, that is going to be my tips and tricks for beginners to start you off. I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends and your families. I'll catch you dudes and dudettes in the next video. Stay classy. Thank <laughs> you.